Okay, right. Uh, good morning, everybody. Okay, right. Good morning, everybody. We'll make a start on this. Uh, this is all new to me now, so bear with me here. We'll give this a bash anyway. Okay, so I'm just going to start again with the uh, Smart Materials chapter. Uh, I got a new headset here, so hopefully that has fixed it. I think maybe the other one was just broken. So hopefully we should be good to go now on Monday. I'm just going to start again because I'm not sure um, who could hear what when I was going through it the first time. So we're going to move on to Smart Materials. So firstly, Smart Materials. So Smart Materials have become huge and a very important category in materials technology. They come up every year in some form or another. Okay, so it is quite an important uh, little chapter. There's not a whole lot to it now, but sure, we'll be going through it now anyway. Um, a smart material is a material that changes to it, uh, that changes its properties in response to an external stimuli, such as pressure, temperature, light, etc. The changes in the material are reversible, allowing the material to be used again and again to react to the changing stimulus. So that's just a nice little blanket sentence that kind of covers smart materials. So if you're ever asked to define it or anything, if you could memorize that, and that would be 10 out of 10, basically. So the main thing is they, were, they react to an external stimuli, and then they reverse back. So these glasses, you can see down here on the bottom right, the person spent them. If they were to just stay like that, that'd be no good, really. So when the person lets go of them, they'll go back into their glasses shape, which is, which is handy, which is what makes it smart, basically, okay? I know Smart Materials isn't new, you've definitely covered it in junior certain stuff as well. We're just going to look at it a little bit more detailed for uh, leaving cert, okay? So, thermochromic and photochromic are the two main ones. Uh, this is kind of our bread and butter. I'm sure we're all familiar enough with these as well, but this is kind of the main, the main two that we're going to have to know. So, thermochromic uh, materials respond to changes in temperature by changing their colour. They can be used as temperature indicators. Thermochromic bricks or paint are often used on the exterior of buildings to reflect more heat when the temperature is high and less when the temperature is low. Okay, so basically you have these thermochromic bricks change to a certain color, maybe black in the winter to absorb heat. Maybe they turn white when it gets um, sunny. To, or when it gets uh, sorry hot to when it gets cold maybe it turns white to to re rebound the heat kind of thing okay um so that's thermochromic photochromic is to do with light then so photochromic materials change color according to the changes in light levels intensities and the main uses where we see these are sunglasses so we have an example of each on the next page but these are kind of the main two that we're gonna that they, that kind of come up. So you can see your uh, thermochromic on the left. It's just kind of like a blackboard. Once the person puts their hand on it, your body is about 37 or so degrees, 36, 37 degrees. You can see it turns to like a whiteboard and there's kind of notes in behind it. And then on the right, you have your thermo or your photochromic lenses. So you can see uh, at nighttime when it's quite dark, they're just a normal pair of eyeglasses. When it gets a little bit sunny, they change to kind of half and half. And when the sun comes out fully, it's nice and bright, they turn it into a pair of sunglasses. Okay, so basically one set of glasses does all. Okay. Uh, next one, so piezoelectrical material. This one is probably new to us, but piezoelectrical materials are materials that have the ability to generate internal electrical charge from applied mechanical stress. The term piezo is Greek for push. Several naturally occurring substances in nature demonstrate the piezoelectrical effect, okay? So we don't need to know why this works, how this works. We just need to be familiar with what it is, okay? So basically, if you press down a squeezing or a pushing force on a material, it will actually give a charge. And you can see it in the little gif here. So they're compressing the material. When it's compressed, you can see the volts rise up to, say, 2 volts, 1 volts, whatever. But anyway, once it's pressed, once there's that pressure, that stress on it, an electrical charge, it creates an electrical charge. Okay? And just some common uses are lighters, so your cigarette lighters and your barbecue lighters. Okay? Uh, the next one, again, we don't need to understand this. 
it's ridiculously complicated. I watched a few YouTube videos on it and it's way beyond my capacity and I use my understanding more, but we just need to be a little bit familiar with what it is, okay? So it's quantum tunneling composites and it's abbreviated to QTC. So quantum tunneling composites is a flexible polymer which contains tiny metal particles. Okay, so it's a flexible polymer which contains tiny metal particles. It is normally an insulator, but if it is squeezed, it becomes a conductor. Okay, so it normally doesn't allow, say, the transfer of heat or electricity through it until it's squeezed, and then it does. QTC can be used to make membrane switches like those used on mobile phones, pressure sensors, and speed uh, controllers. So I was just reading up about it there as well. It's used somewhere in your mobile phone touchscreen. I, I don't really get the ins and outs, outs of it, but it's used in your mobile phone touchscreen, okay? Uh, that's QTC. Again, we don't need to know it in depth, just kind of be aware of the name and an example is using your phone touchscreen. Okay, shape memory alloy is, is more important. We do need to know a bit more on this one. So again, technology loves abbreviations, so it's abbreviated to SMA. A uh, shape memory alloy is an alloy that can be deformed when cold, but returns to its pre-deformed or remembered shape. So a remembered shape is, say, the glasses to be nice and straight going across to have the arches and stuff like that. Okay, so that's its remembered shape. That's what that's called. And it returns to this remembered shape when it's heated. It may also be called memory metal memory alloy, smart metal, smart alloy, or muscle wire, or I think memory wire is another one there as well. So uses, so you have eyeglass frames, you have dental braces, you have orthopedic implants, and cars as well. So you can just see the little gif down here at the bottom, so you have your original wire shape, it's twisted when it's heated above 90 degrees out of shape, and then when it cools down to normal temperature, it returns to its uh, original remembered shape, okay? So it's not a case of um, it has to be cooled, it just when it returns to its normal temperature, okay? So it's pretty cool. So there's loads and loads of uses for this stuff. So your braces, it's used in there somewhere. And we have an example on the next page of where it was first used in cars, and it's actually quite a clever idea. So Corvette's heat activated smart material. So you can see this wire down here, running up the whole length and then back around. So this is a smart wire, okay? So we'll read about here. It says the new 2014 Corv uh, Chevrolet Corvette uses a lightweight heat activated shape memory alloy wire in place of a heavier motorized part to open a vent that allows the trunk, or what we'll call it the boot lid, to close more easily. So basically, in this Corvette or kind of like a Chevrolet Corvette is like a kind of a sports car. So obviously they'd be wanting to save money and save weight wherever they could. So they figured out instead of, they need this vent to open when it gets to a certain temperature inside the car, maybe the engine needs to cool down or it just needs to be cooler to run more smoothly. So they used to have a motor and probably like a chain or a motor and a wire when it gets X amount, when temperature gets a certain degree, it uh, pulls down and opens this vent. But now they've figured out that this smart wire can do the same thing. So it's bent it some way, when it gets hot, the material is going to stretch, open the vent, and then when it gets to the ideal temperature, it might return to its original shape and close the vent. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And obviously, just this little wire here would be way lighter than, say, a motor with it running off a battery and all that stuff. Okay, so it's quite cool. That's a good example of it there. And that is it for today. Okay, apologies for earlier. I think I have it sorted now with this uh, new headset, hopefully, anyway. Uh, we're going to move on to structures of materials next week. Okay, right, that is all for today. You have no questions for today either, or for the weekend. Okay, we'll leave it there, so. Right, cheers up.